I believe that I can beat Cyrox in the stand-up. I can also take it to the ground. I don't care, I believe that. When I look at my opponent, I think I think it or me or her. I'm sorry, I need to try to do my best for I need to, I need to win. I believe I'm the best in the world. I don't care what everybody else thinks. I think if you don't think that, don't step into the cage. I need to, I need to hurt somebody, you know? But nothing personal. Just work. No, I think I'm born with this. I, I'm very aggressive. But I believe he's a true fighter, is a person that always steps up and always give her heart, give everything. Yeah, that when I get in one punch, I like to give it back, you know, big one, you know. Fighting Sarwak for the first time, I, uh, I knew she looked very strong, but I uh, underestimated that. And I've never ever in my life have been hit that hard. Cyborg unleashing now on Conan. Punches and kicks that, and really Cyborg's size and strength beginning to play a factor here. The power of Cyborg. And when I make first fight, fight her. She's good Muay Thai. And First half, she started to push kick my face and take off. Oh man, she's good. So um, it was a big lesson to me because after that fight, I didn't give up. The referee stopped it too soon. And I respect her because because it's man. You say for somebody punch you a lot, and after you say I want to fight you again because she's I don't know. Maybe she's had a balls. So she's good. She's a good girl. She's a good true fighter. You know. I think the Marlos Kunin versus Chris Cyborg fight is probably the biggest fight in Invicta's short history. They're you know, two pioneers, in a sense, of women's MMA, and this is a rematch. It's a grudge match. Historically, no one has done more either at open weight uh, mixed martial arts fights as a woman or fighting at 145 pounds in Marlos Kunin, and obviously no one uh, disagrees with the fact that Chris Cyborg is the best 145 pound woman in the world. Cyborg as a fighter is vicious, just shows up immediately having no concern about you or what you're going to try and do to her, immediately goes on the attack uh, and stays that way and uh, is just tenacious and relentless and a little bit terrifying. People think of her as a great striker, a powerful striker, but really what makes it work is the fact that she goes forward and is so much more aggressive than all of her contemporaries. That's ultimately the hallmark, though. There's so few women who fight the way she does with that level of athleticism, with that level of technique. One thing that makes Cyborg so good is her strength. And uh, that's her, like, her USB, and she really knows how to, <laughs> to, to uh, put it in practice. Chris Ivor is someone that when she smells blood, it's a, it's a constant attack and she actually doesn't slow down typically until the fight's done. I think Cyborg has that it factor. She has that sort of must-see TV quality. Incredible look, an intimidating look, and it's not just the look. It, it goes well beyond that because her fights usually end in spectacular fashion. beats up her opponent, she looks like a Terminator, she looks like a cyborg, right? I mean, she is just so dominant out there, so she has the look and then she backs it up with her fights, I think. That makes for it, you know, being musty TV. You know, I think I'm born in this, I, I'm very aggressive. You know, my family always say, you used to talk to my mom and my mom say angry <laughs> all the time. 
to when girls touch me, I, I like touch and get, go back, you know? That when I get in one punch, I like to give it back, you know, big one. And when I start playing, yeah, I, I'm very confident this time, you know, when I punch back, I punch back too. And I like, you know, it's, it looks like when they see fight, you know, very exciting for watch. And when you punch back, you punch again. And I think people like to watch this fight. It's nice. I never thought it would last uh, this long. I never thought it would, I would get a gym like this by myself. I mean, it was a, ri a ridiculous thing to think. It didn't cross my mind. So MMA is giving me uh, an amazing life. Marlos Kunin, from a pioneer's perspective, is easily one of the most underrated women. I mean, people forget that she's been doing this 12, 13 years and been doing it at a very high level. I don't think people really appreciate the extent to which Marlos Kunin was ahead of her time, as well as the dedication to the game. I mean, how many of her contemporaries are still around? Even ones that you know were in her age range have moved on and gone different ways. She's still intimately associated with mixed martial arts and still one of the best fighters um, in two-way classes. I believe that the weaknesses of Cyborg are that she isn't that technical. Uh, she, when you're fighting her, it's full force. And because of, she's so much stronger than the other girls, she can get away with the lack of uh, technique. And I think if you can uh, overcome that, you can beat her. Marlos Kunin probably has one of the more interesting submission games you're going to find in women's mixed martial arts. Not just the experience, but the positional versatility. She is someone that can leg lock, pull off live submissions, triangle from the bottom, sweep to top. So doing those kind of things are really going to be the ultimate route to victory for her. As mentioned, it's an infinitely difficult proposition to imagine her outstriking Chris Cyborg for a length of time or out wrestling her to take top position. If there is a critique of Chris Cyborg, it is that she can be reckless at times. Something changed my life after that, you know? And I learned a lot of stuff. I learned you not know, believing in some people. I learned, I learned, I grow. And always, you're never you're always happy, you know? Always have something wrong in your life, you know? And this has happened. I, I know it never happened again because I learned. And you always, you, you did a mistake, you know? I think uh, I'm learning something, you know, and I think I never go, never happen again. And but I'm not sad because this, you know, I'm happy. I go back training. I'm learning a lot of stuff. You know, I know people's. Uh, now I know people's with me, you know, because when you're champion, everybody with you. You know, when you go down, who are your friend? And but I still happy. No change, nothing. No change for better. And who will not did a mistake? Everybody had a mistake. Because you would make mistake every day. Every day, every time, depending on your mistakes, you're big or, grow, or small. And I don't care what people think, you know. I care my career, I care my family, I care for myself, you know. And I say I'm sorry, everybody, you know. And, and I, you know, I say I don't make more. And I'm fine, I'm happy, you know. It's fine. Chris Cyborg. Even if she was tested for every single fight from here on out, and negative for all of them, people's assumption would just be, well, she's on something better they're not testing for. I think that's the natural, pessimistic, skeptical sort of way that MMA people are. I think any athlete who shows the kind of dominance, shows the kind of aggression, and has the entire uh, aesthetic and, and uh, competitive package that Chris Cyborg has, there's simply no way for her to escape it. Regardless of how clean she tests for the rest of her career, that's always going to be something that encircles her. I believe there are a lot of people who want to see Cyborg fail. There are a lot of people who believe Cyborg has been cheating for a long time. There are a lot of people who believe that she's you know, taken shortcuts, that you know, she hasn't competed honorably. I mean, at the end of the day, she failed one drug test. You can't take away what she did before that because she failed one in, what, 2011? You can't, you can't do that, that's not fair. But people have done that. So she needs to shut up those critics. And the best way to do that is against top three, top five opponent, someone like Marlus Kunin. And this is a massive fight for Marlus Kunin as well. Obviously, she wants to avenge 
the first loss. She feels like that fight was stopped prematurely. She wants to show that she's better than Chris Cyborg. You know, I think she needs a win over someone like Chris Cyborg to, to prove that she's still a player in this thing. You know, this is the most exciting time, the most important time for women's MMA, and I think she wants to be a part of that. And this is the perfect fight for her, and it's the perfect fight for Chris Cyborg. They both can earn so much coming out of this fight with a win. Two former world champions will face off for the inaugural Invicta FC featherweight title. Marlos Kunin has accomplished much over her long career, but she does not want to be remembered only as a trailblazer, but as one of the best fighters of all time. Kunin's experience had been a false advantage in the first fight, masking the Dutch fighter's ability to assess and respect Chris Cyborg's strength. The memory of her loss to Cyborg now drives Kunin, sharpens her. Chris Cyborg is re-establishing herself as the most dominant female fighter in the world. Cyborg wants to redeem herself from a mistake that marred her legacy and regain her place as the 145-pound champion. In defeating Marlus Kunin, Cyborg not only wins a title, but conquers her critics as well. In a rematch between a pioneer and a titan in the division, Invicta FC will crown their first featherweight champion. Chris Cyborg and Marlos Kunin already have a place in the history of women's MMA. But on July 13th, the fighter who prevails will take the throne at the top. Watch Chris Cyborg vs. Marlos Kunin live Saturday, July 13th. Order the pay-per-view with your local cable or satellite service provider or online at InvictaFC.com.